In the order Pilosa, there is a subgroup of ant and termite-eating mammals called vermilingua. These hairy, worm-tongued creatures inhabit a range of ecosystems, including dry tropical forests, rainforests, grasslands, and savannas. Silky anteaters are arboreal, while tamanduas are as comfortable on the ground as they are in trees. These nine species of anteaters all have a prehensile tail, which they can use to grasp branches while exploring through trees. The giant anteater is fully terrestrial. They walk around on their knuckles due to the size of their three extra long claws. Their tongue is longer than their lengthy skull and can flick in and out at three times per second. The combination of the tiny hooks on the tongue and their extra sticky saliva makes them a terrifying giant predator to tiny insects. Ant eaters are excellent mothers. They carry their offspring on their back. And giant ant eaters, the stripes on the female continue on their offspring. And the same happens in vested tamanduas. This is an amazing camouflage. If you see an ant eater from a distance, you won't even notice it has an offspring on its back. Ant eaters have no teeth. Instead of chewing each individual insect, which would take forever, they grind them up in their stomachs. Ant eaters are solitary animals, but different species can live in the same ecosystem because they have different feeding niches. Some species eat more termites, while others focus on ants. Their long noses help identify the insect species before they dig in. Ant eaters only spend a few minutes at each termite mound and then move on. One reason is so they don't get attacked. The second reason can be considered a sustainable practice and good life lesson. By allowing the termites to rebuild and raise more young, the ant eater has a place to get a meal next time they're in the area. Ant eaters are difficult to study in the wild. While the tamanduas and giant ant eaters can be diurnal or nocturnal, depending on the human activity nearby, the tiny silky ant eaters are nocturnal. What makes silky ant eaters even more difficult to study is that they only weigh 150 to 300 grams. To study them, scientists must find a tiny mammal living high in the trees in the tropical rainforest. They never come down to the ground and are active at night. If this sounds like fun, then maybe you should become an anteater expert. After all, scientists can come from any country and any background. You just need passion and dedication. What's exciting about silky anteater research is that up until 2018, it was thought that there was only one species. The lead researcher said that she didn't see her first silky anteater until being in the field for two years. After 10 years of multiple expeditions observing animals and some very important morphological and genetic research, it was determined that there are seven species of silky anteaters, not just one. Check out these distribution maps and the different color patterns of the silky anteater. How many species would you say there was if you didn't know the genetic research? Like other xenarthrans, anteaters are facing habitat loss. Large wild areas are being replaced by agricultural fields. Fires are being intentionally started to clear areas for cattle or plantations. This leads to severe burn injuries, which often result in death. Some species are caught in the wild to be sold as pets or for illegal trade. Roadkill and being attacked by dogs is also a threat. Luckily, there are many things we can do to save anteaters. One key solution is to keep them in your heart, but leave them in the wild. Xenarthrans should not be kept as pets. Support programs that save their natural habitat so they can have a forever home. Research and buy sustainably sourced products. This may encourage countries to keep their forests and not turn them into cattle ranches, plantations, or cities. If we ate like anteaters, could we help save them? Maybe. Termites, ants, and most insects are high in protein. And if more people ate more bugs, there would be less demand for pigs and cows. Edible insects are better for the environment than large livestock. These large animals require more space, more water, and more feed. Currently, large patches of the forest are being cut down for cattle ranching. This is due to the global demand of veal and beef. If eating insects isn't your thing, you could reduce your meat intake. Not eating meat, even one less day a week, can make a difference. Spay and neutering dogs and cats can help eliminate anteaters' unnatural predators. Every year on November 19th, we celebrate World Anteater Day. It's a great opportunity to share your knowledge with your friends. 
Tell them about the threats they face, but more importantly, tell them the many solutions that we can do every day to help conserve ant eaters. Ant eaters are so important, and we can be part of the solution. Want to be an advocate for ant eaters and their close relatives? Visit zenarthrans.org to learn more ways on how you can help.